Here is a fun and simple project that you can do with an old book or even just a large stack of papers that are the same size. And you can probably tell it's uh, how it was done. It's very simple. It's just dripping watercolors along the edges of the book. And actually for this one, I use liquid acrylics, those uh, acrylic inks, and uh, they worked great. And I did one a few minutes ago where I used watercolors. It did good too. As long as it's something really, really watery, uh, it'll be fine. You don't want to use, even just watered down acrylic paint would probably not be a good idea because um, it's going to stick when it dries, you know? You need something um, clear and watery. So let's do this. I'll show you how to do this. It's not hard. It's a little messy, but doable. Start with a book. Hardback, paperback, doesn't matter in this case. I've got an old uh, cookbook here that I'm going to use. You want to start by disemboweling your book. If it's a paperback, just cut the covers off. Okay, I can repurpose that, so I'm going to set that aside. Okay, I learned this the hard way, and I learned it with the last book that I did. You really do kind of need to um, get a good start on getting this uh, glue loosened. It makes it easier in the end. I'm not strong enough to pull it there. Okay, what I'm doing, I'm going to get as much of this gunk off the spine as I can. The reason is because we're going to want to peel this book apart. Oh, you know what? I'm going to stick this in the oven and uh, see if I can get some of this, at least the outer part. I don't want it to come completely unbound. Not yet. <laughs> I do, but not yet. But it's much easier to do it now rather than, rather than wait until it's all wet and painted and all that. So let me stick this in the oven for a few minutes and loosen some of this glue and see if I can get at least this, this is that fabric stuff that um, is really hard to get off of there. If I can at least get that off and then I'll be in good shape. So I'll be back. Okay, got it. That is that yucky, gluey, cheese clothy thing that's on the binding of some books. I just had to heat it up to peel it off. There's still quite a bit of glue on here, but I think it's going to be all right. If you uh, if I pull on it, you can see that it it's going to come apart pretty easily, and that's what I want after it's finished. So, we're ready to get started. You get you a book block or a stack of pages that are all the, the same size and you'll want to clamp them together, hold them together in some way. Books are just easier. And some water, a spray bottle. And I usually start by spanning the pages and spraying as I go. just to get them a little damp to begin with and then spray the edges spray these pretty good this is where our paint's going to go protect your surface because you're going to have a big wet mess and um, gloves are a good idea I'm using uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's concentrated watercolors and they are so highly pigmented they stain everything they touch skin included so put my gloves on and you're going to choose 
about three colors, really no more than three because, you know, it's going to be easy to make mud. So choose three colors that go together. Red, yellow, and blue, you can't go wrong. They all mix with each other. You know, you're, you're, if you're doing several books, they're all going to be kind of the same color scheme. But they just, the patterns come out so different and interesting that it doesn't matter. Um, you just want to make sure that you don't choose colors that are going to make mud because it will happen. And what I did on this one, I went through, for this one, I put more blue at the top than anything else. I put just a lot of blue and a little bit of red and yellow. And then at the bottom, I put a whole lot of red with just a little bit of blue and yellow. And then kind of an equal amount of all three on the edges. I was able to do both edges on this one, the bound edge and the free edge. Not always possible. I just finished a book a minute ago where I could not do the bound edge. It, there was so much glue and gunk on it, it, it just didn't work. But that's okay. You, you know, you still get three edges. So you can um, do what you want as far as where you put the colors. I think for this one, I'm going to put one color on each edge, at least to start with. Let's see how that looks. And, you know, then if it, we don't like it, we can go back and add more colors, right? What you want to do is, you don't have to have these held together really tight. In fact, you want them to kind of splay out a little bit. And then you go in with your watercolors. You can use a brush or a dropper or whatever you got. And you just randomly apply. Then you squirt more water because you want these to kind of run down the pages. Okay. Let's do some blue down here. very much yellow left so I had to add some water to it but I think it's fine. Eh. Oh, oh, okay. That's okay. We'll use it. I meant to do that. That was a demonstration on what to do if you accidentally spill. Uh -huh. So that, that was that was like staged on purpose. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> or totally not. And it's going to take quite a bit of paint and water to get this going, but it will go. out of and keep spilling. Okay. Alrighty. Now, okay. Didn't learn my lesson. There we Okay, now let's see, get an idea of what we've got. Oh, I don't think I like the three separate colors. Hmm, do I? I don't think so. Okay, no, I don't think I do. 
let's do this. Let's add yellow to the top and bottom. much for that. And let's put some blue and red on this edge. Okay. Oh, that's better. Oh, I like that. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Now, we've got our pages painted like we want them. I'm going to separate this just into small chunks, and this is going to help it to dry a whole lot faster. Um, you can leave it just like it is to dry, but it's going to take a while. And if you're not able to put it in your oven or not comfortable with that, just keep in mind that wet book pages will mildew. So, you know, there's that. Or you can just kind of pull it apart like this. And after I pull these apart, I may go back in and try to do this edge a little bit. Let's just let's just see. And I don't know how many pages I'm pulling at a time. Just you know, just a little cluster. Okay, now that I've got all of these pulled apart into small sections. I think I'm going to try again to get some ink on this edge, or some paint, rather. <laughs> I don't know if I should even bother at this point, but I am going to put my gloves on. <laughs> now, spray down in there. Now I think, let's do blue and red. Yeah? Yeah. I think I'm going to kind of do that so it can get down in there. Okay. Now, we let them dry. Um, I'm going to place my little clusters carefully on my oven rack in the middle upper part of my oven and just kind of lay them out, maybe overlap them a little bit. And I have my oven on 175. That's as low as it will go. So I'm going to put these in, spread them out. I'm going to leave my oven door cracked a little bit and then I'm just going to watch them. And seriously, it, it won't take maybe two, three minutes and the outer pages will be done. Um, so you really have to keep an eye on it and, and keep them moving fast. Move new ones in and pull the old ones out really fast because these will brown nicely. <laughs> so let's do that and then I'll come back when I get everything dry. Our pages are dry and we end up with this whole stack of beautiful colorfully edged papers. Kind of cool, huh? I really love this. You can get a whole lot of really pretty colored papers and really not very much time and effort, you know. Certainly a lot easier than painting them individually. 
Um, a couple things to keep in mind, depending on what kind of paint or ink or watercolors you use, they can be reactivated. Some can, some can't. Just know your your medium. These Dr. PH Martins, if you wet them, they will kind of reactivate and they will bleed and run. So this is a good thing if you get, you know, little areas where they didn't really uh, soak in very good. You can wet it again and it will kind of spread and run a little bit, not a ton, a little bit. So that can be a good thing. But also keep in mind that if you are going to glue it down to another project, you do have a chance of it smearing and bleeding. So um, if that's an issue, then you'll want to spray these with a sealer or a fixative if you've used a, a paint that will reactivate in water. Um, for me, it's not an issue. If it does bleed, I'm just going to use that in some way. So there you have it. Now you have yet another project to do with um, old books, and um, I'm already off onto the next project. I'm actually in the middle of it, so I'm going to start filming that. And for now, the end.